Well, good morning, everybody. We have sunshine this morning. I thought that was really cool yes. after <laughs> all this gray gloom and whatever, but we'll appreciate it, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord. And today, we're going to just, we didn't get to do much for Christmas, so we're going to sing some more Christmas songs today. So we're going to start with Joy to the World. Thank you. 
Well, good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, and we are in a new year and it's sunshiny. So that's got to be a good sign. I'm going to say that's a good sign. Uh, anyway, we're just glad you're here. Let's have a word of prayer. Uh, Father God, again, we thank you. We thank you for your awesome goodness. We thank you that we can just be in your house and spend the time in your presence and we just uh, want to glorify you and all that we say and do. Just, Lord, help us this year. Uh, as this pandemic hopefully comes to a close, uh, that we would uh, just be the kind of people you want us to be. Uh, sharing your love with one another and sharing your love with those that we come into contact with. And, and so, Lord, we just ask for your spirit to be guiding us and leading us each and every day. We just thank you and praise you. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask it and pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I heard the bells on Christmas Day. through 21. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way we do so no longer. Therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I love to tell the story.
morning again and again and again, and we don't have much in the way of announcements, but uh, uh, just to let everybody know, we received our second and final insurance check, and so we'll be able to pay all the roof uh, repair without any problem from the insurance company, and so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, our board meeting, I'm going to postpone our board meeting until February, unless unless our county just reduces, because uh, right at now, where Hood River County is peaking in its number of cases, there was over 400, almost 400 cases in the month of December in Hood River County alone. And so I just don't want to run any risk of getting anybody sick. Uh, so, um, and so we're on, kind of in the lockdown mode again for at least another two weeks. Uh, and let's see. Um, <coughs> Also, uh, last week I mentioned uh, we do have a uh, online directory. Uh, that online directory uh, is available if you go online to instant, uh, instantchurch.com. There's flyers out in the foyer. I, last week I had them in the folded in your folder, but if you're at all interested, there's flyers out there that tell you how you can put that app on your Apple phone, there's a one for Apple phone and Android phone, and one to show you how to do, do it online. Uh, so far, it has uh, only a couple people have actually done that, because I get word uh, through, the, through the deal. And so, hopefully more people will take an interest. If not, we'll uh, get the old uh, uh, handwritten directory uh, printed up for you. But. Uh, uh, it's, it's a good way to actually be able to, on your phone, have everybody's phone numbers and contact information and stuff like that. So if you're interested, uh, pick up those flyers that are laying on for your, out there on the table. And let's see, what else we got? Uh, next week we're going to take down our decorations uh, for, for uh, uh, Christmas. Normally we do that the first Sunday, but we didn't even think about it. So. We'll just wait till next uh, after church next Sunday uh, to be able to take those things down and we'll keep up for one more week. Uh, and let's see. Uh, and so with that, I guess we'll take our morning offering, John. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness always. And Lord, uh, just like with the rough repair, uh, we thought that bill was really, really high. And, and luckily, because of our insurance, we're able to uh, get that bill paid uh, whenever we get the bill. And, and it should be paid in full by the insurance company. And so we thank you for that. And we just give you all the praise. So. As, you, as we give back to you this day in, your, in our tithes and offering, Lord, use it to build your kingdom here and around the, around the county and around the, the world. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen.
Well, it's the first Sunday of the month, so if they have a birthday in the month of January, uh, come on out. Your money. Oh, you got yeah. your money? Got We're not going to let him forget it. <laughs> Sam, you want to put yours in first? Is that 25? Mm -hmm. Or 50? Or what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> what was it? 50. 50? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yay. Okay. 25, yeah. 50, 60, 70, 1. I'd take that. <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put some in? She's going to put some in. My son would have been 52 today. Oh, and so she's going to put, go ahead, nice. put your money in. That's cool. Okay, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to
in the next uh, several weeks, we're going to be working with Galatians chapter 5, dealing with fruit of the, the Holy Spirit. And uh, I just want us to get confused with the fruit of the Holy Spirit versus the, the Spirit, the fruits uh, of the Holy Spirit. It's fruit in our lives that uh, can make us extremely attractive, not only to other Christians, but also to the world. And so, as we as we begin this, uh, I want us to realize that first of all, uh, our belief must equal our behavior. Uh, and and basically, I want you to understand that is that it's all right to have a right belief. Uh, but the right belief doesn't necessarily translate into right behavior. Uh, we, we need to have both. Uh, and, and that's uh, uh, talking about it in Matthew chapter 7. And John Wesley has, has this to say. Uh, well, let's see what, what he has to say. He says, Orthodoxy, or right opinion, is at best a very slender part of religion. Though right tempers or behaviors uh, cannot subsist without right opinions or beliefs, yet right opinions, beliefs may subsist without right tempers or behaviors. There may be a right opinion of God without either love or one right temper toward him. Satan is the proof of this. And in a, in a nutshell, I think what, what he's trying to say is, as believers, our beliefs must translate into the, our behaviors so that it makes a difference in our lives as compared to non-believers. What we believe must translate into us in a way so that when we go out in the world, there's a difference between us and, and non-believers. Uh, and, and so in Galatians uh, chapter 5, 19 through 23 is, is what they call the acid test uh, for, for behavior. Is the acid test for our behavior. And, and, and I'm going to read those scriptures to you right now, starting at verse 19. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Now, we're going we're gonna to kind of look at that. Now, the second part of these verses, uh, Galatians 23 through 25, uh, is the acid test for what belief is. You know, James says, faith without deeds is dead. Now we've heard that said time and time again. Jesus taught that by their fruit you will recognize them. By what we do we ought to be recognized as God's children and, and, and not as, as just of the world. And so looking on into uh, the next verses uh, against all things there is no law that we're talking about the ones before. And that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. You see, uh, our belief has to equal our behavior. Our belief must equal the actions that we have. As Christians, those two should go hand in hand with one another. Uh, 
Your believing must equal your behaving. The way you behave must go along with what you believe. And your behavior must go along with the believing. And, and we repeat that over and over again so that we get to the understanding that as Christians, we're supposed to live a different life than the world. And, and there are basic beliefs for a makeover uh, that only the Spirit of God can do in us. And, and so we're going to be talking about those and we're going to go down through the, each of those fruit of the Spirit. Uh, today we're not going to go into depth into those, those things, but we're at least going to touch on them. Uh, but first of all, I want you to think as I started off that think of fruit, not fruits. I had a little, little video I was going to show and, and I didn't get it uh, programmed right this morning. <clears throat> Uh, that actually talked about having fruit uh, and of the Spirit and the fruits. Uh, and, uh, but there are nine qualities that are listed as the fruit of the Spirit. And, and they must not be confused with the fruits of the Spirit. The picture given to us is, is like a picture of going to a grocery store, a uh, produce section, and picking up uh, some fruit that you want to buy. A uh, pastor tells a story about one day when a bunch of faithful volunteers had come into the church uh, office and were stuffing bulletins. Only thing was the air conditioner wasn't working. It was in Arizona. It was in the summertime. And they were all sweating and they were all hot that day and, and suffering in, in that hot room. And, and so he felt kind of bad for them and so he wanted to get them some water or something that he could do for them. And so he, he asked them, is there anything else that he could do for them? And one of the older ladies piped up and said, a nice piece of juicy watermelon would go really good right now. And so without saying a word, he got in his car and he went to the grocery store. And as he got into the line uh, going towards the watermelon, at the grocery store he saw somebody that was polishing an apple. And another person was uh, had some grapes, and they were they were looking at the grapes and what kind of condition they were in. Uh, and then he saw this wooden crate that had watermelons in it. And all he could see at the, is it was a hiney of a lady in dress and pants that she was dipped over into there. She was reaching down into the bottom. So all you saw was her hiney and legs sticking out. And, and he thought, now that made a real good impression on me. And he walked over to the crate. As he watched her for a few minutes, he, he saw what she was doing. She was reaching in there, and, uh, and she was actually got her ear right to a watermelon. She was stumping on the watermelons, and he says, can I ask what you're doing? And, and she said, well, this is how my grandmother taught me to tell if it's a good watermelon. And... Uh, but her grandmother must have been a pretty good acrobat if she was going to be hauling over the edge of that, that, uh, that crate. And so looking around, he noticed nobody else was really watching. So the next thing you know, he had a woman bent over into the, into the deal and a man in the suit. And he was bent over and doing the same thing. <laughs> now there was those two backsides sticking up out of the out of the deal with four legs dangling in the air. Now, thinking of all of the people in the grocery store that day that were picking and choosing fruit uh, that they'd like to take, this is not the picture that Paul was painting uh, for us about the fruit of the Spirit. He was not thinking of uh, Christians coming along and looking at and deciding, well, maybe I'll take this one or that one or another one, but I don't think I really want one like that. Uh, Paul doesn't want us to pick this or that fruit. His instructions is to have all the fruit growing in our lives. All nine of these things should be growing in our lives. Not saying that every one of them is going to be completely, I mean, it'd be nice if every Christian uh, has all these things to the fullest degree, but... Paul says he thinks it ought to be growing in our lives. And so 
uh, I want us to realize that each one of these things should be exercised in our life. And, and as, we, as we grow as Christians, they ought to be becoming more and more evident in our lives. And, and so with some of us, maybe they're easier than others. Uh, but each and every one should be growing in our lives. Uh, and when it comes to the gifts, gifts of the Spirit, we get some of those gifts, but not all of them. And that's, a, that's another story. Uh, but in contrast, when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, uh, the makeover that the Holy Spirit does in our lives is to give us those fruit. And, and there's a connection between the fruit and the root. The fruit of the, is the characteristic that grows in our lives. The root is the character of God, out of which the characteristics in our lives grows. So let me let me kind of show you, and they're written in your uh, in your uh, handout there. But we'll just go through them. The first is the fruit of the spirit is love. Now love needs to be coming in our lives, and the character of God is that God is love. And if God is love, then as His children, love ought to be growing in our lives. Not to say that we're going to be perfect all the time, but that ought to be growing. The second one is joy. Uh, joy should be in our hearts all the time. You know, and it's sometimes it's kind of difficult for us to do that. I mean, with the pandemic that's been going on, it, it, sometimes it's hard for us when we see all the bad news and stuff going on in the world to be filled with joy. But... Uh, the character of God is that he will rejoice over you. And, and God rejoices in his children and we ought to be rejoicing and we ought to be showing joy in our lives because we are God's children. Uh, the third one is to have peace. To have peace in our life. Uh, and we get that peace strictly because of the character of God in our lives. God is peace in Hebrews 13.20. Um, and this one I don't have a lot of, but I'm, I'm growing in that area. We have to have patience because, let's face it, God's character of God is that he's patient with me and I need to be patient with other people. Uh, and, and, you know, as we get sometimes uh, busy in our lives and sometimes we get uh, impatient with other people, uh, we may need to remember how God is patient with us so that we can be more patient with other people. Uh, and then it comes kindness. And God's character, his kindness is to us. And, and he has been kind to us all, all along. And so we need to continue to be kindness to showing it to others. Goodness is a character and the goodness of God is that he allows us to be part of his children and he forgives our sins. And so we need to show goodness in our lives. And uh, faithfulness. Uh, great is our faithfulness. This Lamentations uh, 3.23. Great is your faithfulness. That is characteristic of God. Uh, and this one that I'm working on better, I think, uh, is gentleness. Uh, God said in Matthew 11, 21, I am gentle and humble, and we need to be that way because God is that way. And the last one is self-control. Uh, and uh, to be in self-control is to, as God is slow to anger, we need to be slow to get angry as well. Now, uh, number three, the, the fruit of the Spirit is to be our attributes. And, and so now as we look at this list, you might be saying, well, yeah, that's, those are characteristics of God. But how am I, I going to hope to be able to live up to those kind of standards? And Paul's not holding out a standard that's impossible to reach. We should just do the best that we can with what we have. 
And how do, how do I do that? How do I know if I can do that? Well, if you look at the sermon notes, you'll notice that there's a, a command in scriptures that possesses each of these fruits. And now you've got to have a fill in the little blank. You probably should be able to fill these blanks in before I even say them. But when we're going down through the, through the fruit, uh, there's a command in scripture for each one of these fruits. Uh, love uh, is to love your enemies. Now, if you can love your enemies, you can certainly love your friends. Loving our friends doesn't necessarily mean we can love our enemies. So why don't we try to, to put on love for any, anyone and everyone in our hearts? Uh, Matthew 5, 44. Joy. Joy is to rejoice in the Lord, what? Always. We need to have joy in our hearts. All of them. And, and I know that that sometimes seems kind of difficult, but it's maybe difficult for us, but it's not difficult if the allowed, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to reside in our lives. Peace. And the command in the scripture is to live at peace with everyone. Not just those that we get along with, but live at peace with everyone. And the same thing is true with patience. We need to be patient with everyone. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 Now, as we go through these in the next few weeks, we're going to dive into each one of these things uh, into more depth. Uh, but with kindness. Kindness. Clothe yourself with kindness. Wear it like you would a, a cloak that you can actually be kind, showing kindness to anybody and everybody. And goodness, goodness, let us do good to all people. You see, there's kind of a theme there, I think. Everybody, everyone, all. Not just the ones that are easy to get along with, but everyone. And uh, faithfulness, faithfulness, be faithful even to the point of death. Oh, we need to be faithful all the time. And gentleness, uh, Titus 3, 2, show true humility toward all men. And it doesn't just say all men, but it's all, everyone there. And the last one is self-control. Be self-controlled and alert. We need to be self-controlled, controlling ourselves, making sure that we're, we're doing all of the things that we did and need to do for the Lord. You see, the highlights, highlighted words in these verses is, is the one that kind of bothers me. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is to be a life quality. All of these things are supposed to be being lived out in our life. Uh, not just something that we turn on and turn off as we want. Every one of us needs to show all nine fruit of the Spirit at times. It's not an issue of whether or not I'm patient at times, Am I being good at times, sir? Or am I loving at times? Or, or do I have joy at times? Those aren't really the questions to be asked. We can all say yes to those questions because we can be good sometimes. We can be patient sometimes. But we must really understand that these, the fruit of the Spirit is a standard of life for Christians. And so, how is that possible? How is it really possible? Well, actually we're getting to the conclusion. Uh, the makeover 
is only being done by the Holy Spirit. And it's being done for two things. For two result, two things. First of all, it is God's resolve. The Spirit's resolve in our lives is that the compassions and desires of the human nature need to be replaced by the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.24, we read these words. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and its desires. You see, the, the passions and desires refer to the acts of the sinful nature within us, as noted in verse 19. These are natural results of the human nature trying to live out by its own power under the law. Romans 6.6 6 refers to our sinful nature and helps us to understand that on our own power, even if we fight the struggle to live according to the law, we will remain slaves to sin. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we might, should no longer live slaves to sin. You see, Romans 6, 18 provides us a contrast of the Spirit's resolve for our lives. It says, you have been set free from sin, We've been set free from sin by that Holy Spirit in our bodies and have become slaves to righteousness. No longer do we have to fall prey to the sinful nature of our own bodies and the, and the passions and the desires that we have because even with us it would be difficult. But with the Holy Spirit nothing is impossible because nothing is impossible with God. How is it possible? The scripture tells us how it's impossible, how it's possible in 2 Corinthians 5, how we can live according to God's will. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God. You see, the first underlying phrase there, the old has gone. That refers to the sinful nature. That refers to our body prior to Christ. The passions and the desires of the flesh and of the world. That has gone. If we are new in Christ, the old has gone. And next, the next phrase says, the new has come. Well, the new has come refers to the fruit of the Spirit that we've been talking about this morning and that we will continue to talk about for the next several weeks in more detail. Because of the fruit of the Spirit in us, the new has come and now we are under control of the Holy Spirit and it's finalized in the last section that is saying all this is from God. That's because you and I, trying to do the best that we can do, trying to do everything right, we are going to fail on our own. The only way that we can live the kind of life that God wants us to live is when we allow ourselves to be under control of the Holy Spirit of God, and that results in us having to submit ourselves over to Him. And our response then... Our response uh, is how we respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the leading of God himself. Uh, a slogan on a te teenager's t-shirt says these words, your team can make you hustle. Your coach can put you on the team. A scout can give you a scholarship, but only you can make you a player. It takes you responding to the 
the will of God, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, that will allow you to be successful. You know, we are not only need we not only need to have the Holy Spirit at work in us, but we must be obedient, and we must obediently respond to the prompting of the Spirit in our lives. And as the scripture uh, that we read indicates, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit in verse 25. And how do we keep step with the Spirit? I mean, how is that possible? Well, what we have to do is three things. The first thing that we have to do is to believe. 2 Corinthians tells us, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. We have to believe, number one, that God is all-powerful. We have to believe that He and He alone can help us to overcome the sinful nature that's within us. Only God can do that. And we have to believe that. We have to believe that His grace is sufficient and that His power is good enough to make us do the things. And the word weakness there indicates to me that we need to submit ourselves to the, His leading. We need to say, God, I can't do it by myself. I have to have your help. So we have to believe. And next we have to ask. We have to ask. And, and that's what we see in Psalm 139 that says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, I'm sure that none of you have ever had anxious thoughts. And I'm sure that uh, nobody has found any kind of offensive ways within ourselves. I mean, I think we all make mistakes. We all mess up. And God wants us to say, Father, I can't do it by myself. And so search me, O oh God. That ought to be the prayer of our hearts. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We need to get on our knees and we need to let the Lord be our leader. We need to let the Lord be the ruler of our lives. We need to let the Lord control the what we do. And that leads us to the last thing, is we need to obey. We need to obey the Word of God. And how do we do that? We do that by reading His Word. We do that by praying. We do that by seeking the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. The last scripture I'm going to leave us with is from Hebrews 4, 7 that says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. You don't harden your hearts if you hear his voice and you do that by staying in constant communion with the Lord. By allowing his Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. Spend time in prayer, spend time in the Lord and he will communicate what is impossible with us, nothing is impossible with God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day that you are the Lord God. We thank you that you are the creator of the universe, that you are the creator of this world, and that you are the creator of each and every one of us. That you created mankind to to be your children. You created us to be loving you as our Father in heaven. We, you created us to 
to live our lives out and, and to honor and worship you. And so, Father, my prayer this day is that for each person that sits in this congregation and each person that might hear this uh, on the internet uh, later today, that, Father, each and every one of us would allow ourselves to surrender ourselves to you to allow you more access to us, to me. That you would then lead me, lead us, and guide us along the life of path. And that you would help us to overcome the passions of the human flesh and allow the leading of your Holy Spirit to lead us into a closer relationship with you. And so, Father, bless each person that has heard your word today. Allow your Holy Spirit to, to fill them to overflowing that the fruit of the Holy Spirit as we talk today and over the next several weeks will become more prevalent in our lives, that we would actually grow and grow and that the fruit of your Spirit would be more and more evident in our lives. So that, Father, not only will we grow in our relationship with you, but that we, we by the fruit of your Holy Spirit examined and, and lived out in our lives might attract others uh, to you so that they can too experience the love, the peace, the joy, the forgiveness, all of the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, that, that they can have in their lives to overflowing measure because your Holy Spirit lives with them as well. We give you all the praise and glory today. We thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And the whole church said, Amen. God bless. Have a great week. Happy New Year. And I hope this year will be a better year than the ones in the past. Uh, and God bless. And we will see you next week.